Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 3.5, Decimal Addition. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you use base 10 blocks to model decimal addition? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 3.5, found on page 61, and let's get started. Now, in this lesson, base 10 blocks will be used to model decimal place values. We will use flats to model ones, longs to model tenths, and small cubes to model hundredths. And we're going to use those base 10 blocks to help us find our decimal sums. Now, let's take a look at question number two. Our job is to add, draw a quick picture. Now, for question number two, they give us the decimal numbers 15 hundredths plus 36 hundredths. Now, my first step is going to be this. I'm going to model each add-end using flats, longs, and small cubes as needed. Now, when I look at my first decimal number, which is 15 hundredths, what I know is I have a number in the tenths place and a number also in the hundredths place. So I'm going to be using the longs and also the small cubes. So what I'm going to do is this. In order to model 15 hundredths, I'm going to draw one of the longs. It represents my one in the tenths place. And then I'm also going to draw five of the little hundredths cubes. So here's one, two, three, four, five. Now that represents my 15 hundredths. Next, I'm going to focus on my 36 hundredths. And what I know here is I have a three in the tenths place. So to represent that three in the tenths place, I'm going to draw one, two, three of the longs. And once again, that represents my three tenths. Now I also have a six in the hundredths place, so I'm not going to go ahead and use those small cubes, and I'm going to draw six of them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, five, six of those small cubes. And what I know is those six small cubes represent the six in the hundredths place in my second add-end. Now, my next step is going to be this. I'm not going to begin by adding the hundredths. What I know is this. I have five hundredths here, and I have six hundredths here. Well, I know that five plus six is going to give me eleven. And because I have eleven, that means I'm going to have to regroup. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take the six hundredths here, and I'm going to take four of the hundredths here, and what happens is, when I add the 6 plus the 4, that gives me 10 hundredths. So I'm now going to regroup those 10 hundredths, and they're now going to become a regrouped tenth. Now that I've regrouped, I'm going to see what I have left in my hundredths place. And what I know I have left is, I have that 1 hundredth. So I'm going to write down a 1 in my hundredths place. And then I'm going to focus on counting up my tenths. Well, what I know is I have one tenth plus three tenths, which is four, plus the regroup tenth, which is going to give me five. So I'm going to write down a five in the tenths place. Now, based on my knowledge of decimal place value, I know that my decimal has to fall in between my whole number and my tenths place. Well, I don't have any holes in this problem, so I'm going to plug in a zero here. And so when I add, 15 hundredths plus 36 hundredths, based on my models that I have here, I know that my answer is going to turn out to be 51 hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down, and we now have our answer. Now, let's take a look at question number three. Once again, our job is to add, draw a quick picture. For number three, my job is to add 8 tenths plus 7 tenths. And once again, my job is to model each add-end. So I'm going to start first of all with my 8 tenths. And what I know is I have that 8 in the tenths place. And I know that my longs represent the tenths place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by drawing 8 of the longs. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So once again, this represents my 8 tenths. Now I'm going to focus on my second add-in, which is 7 tenths. And I'm going to model that also using the longs, and I'm going to draw 7 of them this time. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
6, 7. Now, I'm going to work on adding my tenths together. Well, I know that 8 tenths plus 7 tenths is going to give me 15 tenths. So what I know is I'm going to now have to regroup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 5 tenths here and the 5 tenths here and I'm going to regroup now and I'm going to regroup those as 1. Now that I've regrouped, I'm going to go back and begin counting the tenths that I have left. Well, I know that I have 3 tenths here plus 2 tenths here and when I add 3 plus 2, that's going to give me 5. So I'm going to write down a 5 in the tenths place. And I know once again that my decimal falls in between the whole number and the tenths place, so I'm going to plug in my decimal. And then I'm going to look to see what I have here, and I have 1 regrouped. So I'm going to add the 1 in as the whole number part. So when I add 8 tenths plus 7 tenths, it takes me to 1 and 5 tenths. And I'm going to go ahead and write that down, and we now have our sum. Now, let's take a look at question number 7. Once again, our job is to add, draw a quick picture. For question 7, they give us 3 and 8 tenths plus 1 and 4 tenths. Well, when I look at that first add-end, what I see is, is that I have a 3 in the 1's place. So in order to model that 3 in the 1's place, I'm going to have to draw 3 of the flats. So I'm going to go ahead and draw 1, 2, three of the flats. And those three flats represent my three in the ones place. Now I also notice that I have an eight in the tenths place. So to model or represent that eight in the tenths place, I'm now going to draw eight of the longs. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what I have here models my three and eight tenths. Now I have to model my second add-end, which is 1 and 4 tenths. Because I have a 1 in the 1's place, I need to use 1 flat to represent that 1. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my 1 flat to represent the 1 in the 1's place. And then I also notice that I have a 4 in the tenths place. So I'm going to draw 4 of the longs to represent the 4 in the tenths place. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, I'm going to begin by adding my tenths. And what I know is, is that 8 tenths plus 4 tenths takes me to 11 tenths. So I know that I'm going to have to now regroup. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take my 4 tenths here, and I'm going to group that with 6 of the tenths here. So those are going to now be regrouped as 1. So my 10 tenths has now been regrouped as 1. Now I'm going to go back and see what I have left over in my tenths and what I see is I have 2 tenths that are left. So I'm going to, there's my 2 tenths, I'm going to write down a 2 in the tenths place. So here's my 2 in the tenths place. And once again, I know that my decimal falls between the 1's and the tenths place, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in my decimal. And now I'm going to count how many 1's I have. Well, I know that 3 1's plus an additional 1 is going to give me 4. And then I'm also going to add the regrouped 1, and that's going to give me 5. So I'm going to write down a 5 in the 1's place. So what I know is, when I add 3 and 8 tenths, plus 1 and 4 tenths, it's going to give me 5 and 2 tenths. And I'm going to go ahead and write that down, and we have now found the sum. Now, let's take a look at question number 8. Once again, our job is to add and to draw a quick picture. Well, for question 8, they give us 2 and 71 hundredths plus 2 and 15 hundredths. Now, when I look at that first add-in, what I see is I have a 2 in the 1's place. So to model that 2 in the 1's place, I'm going to need to draw 2 of the flats. So here's 1, 2, 
Now, what I also notice is I have a 7 in the tenths place. So I'm going to have to draw 7 of the longs to represent those seven in the, that 7 in the tenths place. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, I also notice that I have a 1 in the hundredths place. So I'm now going to draw one of those small cubes to represent my 1 in the hundredths place. So I now have a model for 2 and 71 hundredths. Now I'm going to focus on the second add-in, which is 2 and 15 hundredths. Well, I notice once again that I have a 2 in the ones place. So I'm going to once again draw 2 of the flats, and that represents my 2 in the ones place. Now I also notice that I have a 1 in the tenths place. So I'm going to use one of the longs to represent that 1 in the tenths place. Now I also have a 5 in the hundredths place. So I'm going to draw five of those small cubes to represent the five in the hundredths place. So here's one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to begin by adding, first of all, my hundredths. And what I know is, is one hundredth plus five hundredths is going to give me six hundredths. So I'm going to write down a six in the hundredths place, and because that number is less than ten, I don't have to regroup. Now I'm going to focus on my tenths. And what I know is 7 tenths plus 1 tenth is going to give me 8 tenths. So I'm going to write down an 8 in the tenths place. And once again, because that number is less than 10, I don't have to regroup. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the decimal right in front of my 8 because once again the decimal falls in between the ones and the tenths. And now I'm going to focus on how many ones I have. Well, I know that 2 plus 2 is going to give me 4. So I'm going to write down a 4 in the ones place. So when I add 2 and 71 hundredths plus 2 and 15 hundredths, that's going to take me to 4 and 86 hundredths. Now, let's take a look at question number 10. It's one of our real world problem solving questions, and number 10 says, Draco bought six tenths pounds of bananas and nine tenths pound of grapes at the farmer's market. What is the total weight of the fruit? So what I know is this. I know that six tenths pound of bananas and nine tenths pound of grapes were bought at the farmer's market. The question says, what is the total weight of the fruit? And I know that if I see that word total, I'm going to have to add my two amounts together. So what happens is my problem becomes my six tenths plus the nine tenths. Now we're going to draw a quick picture to model that decimal addition. So when I look at that first add-in, which is six tenths, I see a six in the tenths place. So to show that six in the tenths place, I'm going to draw six of the longs. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to focus on my second addend, which is nine tenths. So I'm going to have to draw nine of the longs to represent the nine tenths. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm going to work on adding those tenths together. And I know that six tenths plus nine tenths is going to give me fifteen tenths. Well, I know that I'm going to have to regroup. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take my 5 tenths here and my 5 tenths here, and I'm now going to regroup those 10 tenths. And when I do regroup those 10 tenths, that becomes 1. Now, I'm going to go ahead and begin adding the tenths that I have left. I have 1 tenth plus 4 tenths and I know that when I add 1 plus 4, that's going to give me 5. So I'm going to write down a 5 in the tenths place. And I'm going to place my decimal right in front of the 5. Now I also notice that I have 1, 1. So I'm going to write down that 1 in the ones place. And what I know is this. When I add 6 tenths plus 9 tenths, based on my model, I end up with 1 and 5 tenths, and that would be pounds 
and we now have our answer. Now, let's take a look at question number 11. It's another one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and number 11 says, Nancy biked 2 and 6,500 miles in the morning and 3 and 1,900 miles in the afternoon. What total distance did she bike? So what I know is this. In the morning, Nancy biked 2 and 6,500 miles. And in the afternoon, she biked 3 and 1,900 miles. Then it says, what total distance did she bike? And I know that when I see the phrase total distance, that means I need to add my two distances together. So my problem becomes 2 and 65 hundredths plus 3 and 19 hundredths. Now, I'm going to use my models for this decimal addition. So I'm going to look at the first add-in, which is 2 and 65 hundredths. And I see that I have a 2 in the ones place. So to model that, I'm going to draw two of the flats. So here's one, and here's two. Now I also see that there's a six in the tenths place. So I'm now going to draw six of the flats. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I also have a five in the hundredths place. So I'm going to use those small blocks, and I'm going to draw five of those. So here's one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to move to the second add-in, which is three and nineteen hundredths. And I notice that I have a three in the ones place. So I'm going to draw three of the flats. So here's one, two, three. Now I also notice that I have a one in the tenths place. So I'm going to draw one of the longs. And then I also notice that I have a 9 in the hundredths place. So I'm going to draw 9 of those small cubes. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now I'm going to begin by adding my hundredths together. And what I know is I have 5 hundredths here and I have 9 hundredths here. And I know that when I add 5 plus 9, that's going to take me to 14. Now, what I know is, because I have 14 hundredths, I'm going to have to regroup. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take the 5 hundredths here, and also the 5 hundredths down here, and I'm now going to regroup those 10 hundredths. And when I regroup, that now becomes 1 tenth. Now, let's take a look at what we have left here in the hundredths. I now have four of those hundredths left. So I'm going to write down a four in the hundredths place. Now I'm going to focus on my tenths. And what I know is six tenths plus the one tenth is going to give me seven, plus the regroup tenth is now going to give me eight. So I'm now going to write down an eight in the tenths place. And I'm going to put my decimal right in front of the eight. Now I'm going to focus on adding my ones. And I know that if I have two here, and 3 here, 2 plus 3 is going to give me 5, so I'm going to write down a 5 in the ones place. Now, when I add 2 and 65 hundredths plus 3 and 19 hundredths, it's going to take me to 5 and 84 hundredths. And I'm going to add miles behind that, and we now have the answer to our word problem. Now, let's take a look at our homework questions for tonight. I would like you guys to complete question number one and question number two, along with numbers three through six, found in your GoMath workbook on page 62. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, I want you to let me know, do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert? Don't forget, your homework questions for tonight will be to complete number one and number two, along with numbers three through six, found in your GoMath workbook on page 62. I hope you have a great evening, and we look forward to seeing you at school tomorrow.